VE pump reassembly. When you finish this program, you'll be able to reassemble this VE pump and make static adjustments. This is part three of a series brought to you by Bosch. Of course, you'll follow step-by-step -step written instructions. You start with a clean working environment. Before assembly, dip all parts in clean test oil. Begin by pressing the drive end oil seal into the housing. Next, using the correct mounting flange, secure the pump housing in a swivel vise. Turn the housing downward to insert the supply pump. On the supply pump holding tool, place the pump retainer plate, the impeller with vanes, and the eccentric ring. Be sure the crowned edge of each vein faces outward. Notice these two holes in the eccentric ring. They're not equally spaced to the inner wall of the ring. This is a right-hand rotation pump, so the hole farthest from the inner wall must be to the right. If it were a left-hand pump, this hole would be to the left. As you get ready to install the pump, position the third hole toward the open or governor side of the pump. Carefully now, and without tilting the eccentric ring, you slide the tool and supply pump parts up into the injection pump housing. But don't remove the special tool yet. First, rotate the housing upward to the vertical position. Then, you can withdraw the special tool and the parts will stay in. Line up the holes and fasten the retainer. That takes care of the supply pump. Drive shaft. Install the governor drive gear onto the shaft so that the recess in the gear faces the tangs. These are new rubber buffers, so they must be lubricated before you press them into place. After using grease to secure the thrust washer, insert the Woodruff key. With the pump horizontal and the drive shaft seal greased, Install the protective sleeve. As you insert the drive shaft, line up the Woodruff key with the keyway of the impeller. Now insert the connecting pin, hole end first, into the roller cage. The hole must be vertical with the cage cutout facing you. With the pump vertical, and the drive tangs crosswise, carefully lower the roller cage into the pump housing. With the slider greased, insert it into the timing piston. Grease the timing piston and hold it like this. You should see this fuel passage and the piston's hollow end. Now rotate the slider so you can see the hole. Wiggle the timing piston until you can push the connecting pin into the slider. You secure it with a retaining pin and install the clip. Slide the timing piston back and forth to check the freedom of movement. You should feel no drag as the piston and roller cage move together. Install the O-ring and the cold start advance mechanism. Now some VE pumps may have a cover plate. Check for correct cold start travel as outlined in your written instructions. Next, we measure the thickness of all shims removed from the timing piston and cap during disassembly and compare this value with that shown in the spec sheet and adjust if necessary. Insert the 0.6 millimeter shim into the timing piston. With the remaining shims in the cap, put in the spring and the O-ring and fasten the cap in place. Use the special socket 
to install the pressure regulator. Now install the drive disc into the roller cage and lower the spring into the drive disc recess. Then put in the cam plate so that the plunger drive pin aligns with the drive shaft keyway. Put in the pre-stroke spacer, which you took out in disassembly. Your next step is to check the plunger spring pretension. You begin by placing the guide pins into the distributor head, then put the previously used shims, spring seats, and plunger return springs into place. Now, slide the plunger assembly into the distributor head. As you can see, this includes the plunger shim, thrust washer, and spring seat. Holding the assembly like this, measure the distance from the distributor head machined surface to the top of the plunger. Now to do this right, you'll have to keep all components in contact with one another without compressing the spring. On the spec sheet, compare this plunger spring pretension with the distance you measured. Adjust the shims between the guide pins and spring seats if necessary to correct this dimension. Use an equal size shim pack on each side. Plunger. To put in the metering sleeve, you'll have to remove this plunger assembly from the head. Notice that small hole in the metering sleeve? It should always face the plunger foot. Now lower this plunger assembly with the spacer, thrust washer, and spring seat onto the cam plate. Line up the drive pin with a slot in the plunger foot and be sure the pre-stroke shim is in place. Next, place return springs and the guide pins with spring seats and shims onto the lower spring seat. When you install the governor lever assembly, the ball stud fits into the metering sleeve socket. Install the governor's support screws with their gaskets. Distributor head. With the distributor head clamped in brass jaws, install the stop solenoid. Line up the lower spring seat so that the guide pins match the head. Recheck that the ball is in the sleeve socket. Grease these compression springs before you put them in place. That way, they won't fall out when you turn the head over. Now, without cocking, lower the head onto the plunger and slide it into the housing. As you wiggle the governor lever, watch that the metering sleeve does move. That way, you're sure the ball has engaged the sleeve socket. Temporarily, and using just two screws, secure the head to the housing, leaving off the bracket. For zero pre-stroke pumps, you'll want to check the plunger BDC position with a dial indicator. Watch the dial indicator as you rotate the plunger to bottom dead center. On this zero pre-stroke pump, when you measure the plunger bottom dead center position, you're measuring the distance between the machined surface of the head and the top of the plunger at BDC. Now, if necessary, change the shim under the plunger foot. Install the central screw plug into the distributor head, and then torque to specs. Install copper gaskets, delivery valves, springs, wear washers, and holders. Now, of course, you'll torque all fasteners, but the delivery valve holders are especially important. Finally, remove one distributor head retaining screw and install the bracket and three screws. Governor. Start by placing the governor's shim and thrust washer into the housing. 
Into the flyweight carrier with flyweights, you next insert the washer, and then the guide bushing with its end plug. Now place the flyweight assembly in the housing and install the governor shaft into the housing until you can measure the correct dimension from the housing surface to the end of the governor shaft. With a feeler gauge between the carrier and the stop pin, measure the end play of the flyweight assembly. Correct if necessary by exchanging the governor shim. Now, with the pump horizontal, lock the governor shaft into position using this pin wrench. This is the spacer block used to measure the starting fuel dimension. To make this check, push the governor lever against its stop pin. As you compress the starting lever, measure the gap between the guide bushing plug and the starting lever. If necessary, correct the dimension by changing the guide bushing end plug. Remove the spacer block. Slide the governor's spring assembly shaft into the governor lever. Install the idling spring. Then fasten with the C-clip. Cover. Install the gasket in the injection pump cover. Offset the control lever shaft to the left of this spring assembly. Now push the control lever shaft up through the cover, but be careful to avoid damage to the O-ring or bushing. Fasten the cover to the pump housing. Now install the full load adjustment screw. With the shaft rotated counterclockwise and the return spring in place, Install the control lever 90 degrees to the pump axis. Install the control lever bracket, washer, and nut. And your final step, install the overflow fitting. In this program, you have learned how to reassemble the VE pump. Brought to you by Bosch.